Hey everyone, welcome. Thank you so much, Jen, for joining us. We are talking today about creative chutzpah, finding it between fear and courage. Tell us a little more about that. Well, first, thank you. Thank you so much for this invitation. And thank you for everybody who's in the Magic Wands community. You are actually getting the first look into some of the things I'm writing for a book that's coming out in June. So this is some of the language that I'm already starting to practice and you get to kind of experiment with it and see how it's gonna feel for you. Uh, just sort of a way of background, I'm Jen Falco. I am the founder of Always On My Way. I'm an author and a creativity kindler and a mindful writing mentor. And the book that's coming out in June is the working title is the in-between journeying between fear and courage and it starts with this idea that fear and courage are not a light switch that you turn on and off <laughs> that you flip a coin and in one moment you're in this state of fear and the next moment you're in a state of courage the concept is that there's not really a straight line always between that. It's, it's a journey. <laughs> and that we feel that we have, um, you know, there are a lot of things in between fear and courage, like anxiety and nervousness and worry and doubt and joy and uncertainty and willingness and expectation right there's like a whole thing and we'll take you through this but um that's going to be our starting point as we kind of get into this and um it adrian i'll bring this back to you for a second to see if if we're going to talk a little bit about this between us or if i should just dive in um yeah i would love to discuss that a little bit just um, amongst ourselves i <laughs> this is such a powerful thing just recognizing that that there's a spectrum, right? And it's always in motion. And there's this constant kind of resistance and acceptance, resistance, acceptance, right? And I love how you, you know, there there really is that broad spectrum in between those two things. And some of those things feel uncomfortable, right? Like anxiety, but some of them just feel exciting, like anticipation. And how we frame that in in between place is really up to us. This is something I tell people all the time who are performers, that that feeling that you get right before you go on stage, if you call it stage fright, then it's going to feel like fear. If you call it rock star juice or adrenaline or excitement, right? It, it frames it in a whole new way. It's the same sensations, but when we frame them in a positive way, all of that is useful energy. So fear is not our enemy in the way that we think it is. Uh, like you said, fear and courage work together and we need that fear to experience courage. And I think that's, you know, in, what, in the writing of this, I'm realizing actually that I've probably mislabeled a lot of my fears <laughs> in that, we, we tend to have this tendency to throw all our uncomfortable feelings and all the icky feelings and all the things we don't wanna deal with under some umbrella called fear. And then we're magically supposed to show up and man up and put our big girl panties on and deal with this like huge umbrella of things that are underneath it. And in the writing, and it just happened like in this last month where I'm like, that's not actually a fear, that is an insecurity. <laughs> so why don't I label it as an insecurity if my confidence is affected and my esteem is affected and it's not some sort of external input that is life-threatening and dangerous to me, right? Let me start managing my insecurity <laughs> as opposed to managing my fear. So yeah. that's part of a lot of other things for me realizing that oh I'm writing about navigating from fear to courage and what I'm actually really talking about is insecurity oh goodness so I have to change the title of the book no right like but you can see the whole spiral of how that yeah. happens now 
because suddenly I am unraveling fear, right? And right. saying, oh, you're just an you're just an insecurity, you know? And then even in the the way that I've always thought of courage, I always thought of courage. And I'm lucky and fortunate to have grown up in a time when women have a lot of freedom in a lot of ways. My mom and my grandma didn't grow up in those kinds of times, right? So I'm of the generation that you went to school and you went to university and you got a job and you could get married and you could have kids and you could not have kids and you could do whatever the hell you wanted most of the time. And then you were, my courage became my ambition. It became the way I showed up in the world. It was the Wonder Woman talent of being everything to everybody all the time. It was the shield that I wore out in the world. Like, yes, I'm not afraid of anything. I've got my shield of courage to protect me. And now I'm 52 <laughs> and courage is like, you know what? You don't have to say anything. <laughs> you could just sit here and listen. You could, you know, not engage in this. You cannot have to run or flee or fawn or freeze. You could just sit here and be with whatever's right here, right? The, the, the frame of courage is moving for me too. So that's um where we're going today we're gonna use i have a few interactive ideas of getting us through that so that we can see it hear it and like connect to it kinetically yeah i i love that i love that idea of parsing out and recognizing that you know fear when we think of fear we think of something that's genuinely dangerous to us right? That there's an actual present danger here. And so much of the time, it's not. It's anxiety, which is fear about fear. Fear that there may be a fear in, in our future, right? That something unpleasant might occur that hasn't even occurred yet. Maybe it's worry about something. Maybe it's insecurity, like you said. So naming the specificity of what am I actually feeling so that then we can flip it and go, do I need to feel that right now? Could I feel the opposite? What is the opposite? How does that feel? And I, I love, love when you always bring that in, right? Like the 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 flipping of that emotion. And the, well, just even naming anxiety is the fear of fear that hasn't even happened. <laughs> like, what do we do to ourselves, right? Like, why can't we then flip that and say, yeah, you know what? I'm going to just come into the heart of courage and I'm going to be with what's here now because that that is really not useful all this anxiety but it it you know I don't know about you but my fear certainly doesn't or my anxiety or my worry or my insecurity it doesn't show up with a big neon sign though that says hi here I am I'm your fear no it creeps in and it lingers and it clings and it holds my heart and it holds my thoughts and it freezes me in this oh the world is just so awful and I'm so awful and I'm so inadequate right and it and it turns up in this other way so that by the time you're all the way into that cycle of understanding what you are facing you have to go kind of back and say oh yeah there was this input that kind of that I got this impulse that triggered all of these questions or all of this perceived or real danger <laughs> and then that kind of got me from there all the way to over here somewhere spinning around and now I've got to kind of keep spinning towards getting towards a choice point where I can say yeah you know what that's going to be courage it's going to take a little bit of courage to do something it's going to take a little bit of um positive self-talk <laughs> <laughs> to get me to where I got to go. Right. And it's, um, yeah. And something else you said really resonated with me is that sometimes doing nothing is the most courageous thing you can do. Sometimes <laughs> not responding or just sitting with something, sleeping on it, like asking some clarifying questions before you take any action. Like sometimes that's the bravest thing you can do in that moment. Yeah. And I got to tell you that has been a lesson that I've not learned too long ago and it's probably going to take my whole lifetime rest of my life 
to learn it well. And especially with my family even, right? Because they know all the buttons to push. They know what's going to rile, you know, rouse my energy and my emotional attachment to something. And sometimes, you know, just practicing that and saying, all right, I, there's, I don't need to be righteous here. <laughs> They've got their opinion about what's going on. They think it's like this. If that's how they want to see it in the world and it's not hurting anybody, then oh, what the hell do I need to weigh in for? <laughs> I don't need to, like, the courage to not prove myself right is is the courage that I'm learning now. Like, okay, I don't have to prove anything. I I wrote this in the book at some point, or or somewhere I wrote it of, I don't. Um, oh, and this ties into like the fear of failing or the insecurity of failing. That I don't need to keep getting A pluses in life. Like I'm already passing it with flying colors. Like I don't need to. There's no a there's no a plus waiting for me anywhere. <laughs> so that's the other <laughs> like who's gonna give me an a plus? I certainly don't give myself an a plus. So you know, what am I waiting for? Why don't I just give myself an a plus all the way across the board with twelve pluses on the end and move past this? But no, right? That little creepy thing gets in there and it kind of niggles and it's like, oh, nobody's so. <laughs> so we're gonna play with this um this and if it's okay i'm gonna jump in and share the screen and get that kind of I, because what i want us to do and what i feel like we're all really learning right now is rewiring our, you know re rewiring our thoughts and our the way that we feel things so the best way for me to learn these things is to read it or see it and then to hear it and then to kind of get my hands in it so that it, it there's like a three prong system of rewiring. So we're gonna kind of do that right now. If you need to get a, a pen and paper, we're gonna do some speed writing. And there is going to be a moment, a couple minutes when you get to shake, you know, like just kind of do a full body shake. So you could stand up and do that. You could do that sitting down. If you're not in a place where you can do that safely, then just, substitute that and imagine the shaking <laughs> like if you're driving and listen to this please don't do this but if you have a little bit of space in the room that you're sitting in just you can just do a little wiggle you know and if you are driving you could even just kind of wiggle your fingers you just want to move some energy around okay so here we here we go and the first is really just oh, let me just All right, so I'll hold, yeah, I'll start here. I just want us to have the common definition of where we're starting with this idea of fear. This is some definition that I've kind of pulled together from a lot of different sources, but it's something that we already sort of know. Fear is a primal and universally recognized feeling that surfaces when there's an external threat or danger to our physical, emotional, or psychological safety, real or perceived. Fear is that like the hair standing up on your on the back of your neck, that bad feeling that something's going to happen, that really, yeah, primal, that, that thing that we're all born with to run or to fight or to fawn or to freeze. Those are our biological responses to fear. And they're mostly an external in, ex, input, external input coming towards us. And then we respond to it. Now, because I'm feeling the need to clarify what is an insecurity as opposed to a fear, so that we can relabel things a little bit differently and start using our emotional intelligence that we are all studying and becoming more aware of in ways that are actually more accurate. <laughs> I think we, we like I said before, we throw fear into this big bucket where everything is a fear. Everything from the fear of death and the fear of spiders to the fear of belonging and the fear of failing, right? Everything is a fear now. And that, as a person who writes, <laughs> for 30 years of my life, I've been a journalist. And <laughs> the, the way we throw words around 
bothers me. So I take it on myself to kind of educate myself about different words. So insecurities chip away at our confidence and self-esteem. I feel that they're internally generated triggers or thoughts or sensations that create feelings of inadequacy, negative self-talk, low self-worth, throw your other word in here. But these are the insecurities, these moments of, of self-doubt and self, well, demoralizing things that we do to ourselves, right? <laughs> and the insecurities may come out of a fear that's coming at us, but this loop that most of us are in most of the time the fear has already passed <laughs> days and months and years and weeks ago, right? Like that initial fear factor may be gone and we're still, we're still carrying it. So courage, I'm going to, I'm defaulting to Brene Brown's because I think she's done some of the best work on this so far. And we all know who she is. I mean, she's amazing in her research of shame and vulnerability and courage. But when you go back to the original meaning of courage, it's not what it was today. It, it, it's it's not this heroic action that we have to be, you know, name your superhero and go out in the world like this. Courage is to speak one's mind by telling all one's heart. So if we use courage, and it comes from the Latin word of core, C-O-R, which is heart, right? So if we use courage as our heart language and fear and insecurity as our mind's language, then we can start having a different conversation. This is a very rough draft of something that I'm playing with for the book, where we have fear as an impulse that kind of comes over here, manifest itself as pick any of these emotions that feel good to you, leave whatever's behind, leave what doesn't work behind, fill in new ones as you go. But then you've got anxiety, worry, concern, nervousness, frustration, anger, rage, resentment, discussion, sadness and grief, decision, fatigue, exhaustion, fortitude, ambition, independence, freedom, equanimity, trust, peace, willingness, joy, awe, wonder. And then you come to this heart of courage where you then choose something that looks like action involving courage. And it, who knows how fast you get here, right? Maybe you go from, maybe you go from here to here pretty quickly. Maybe you're trained enough to do that. But if you kind of lay down the shield of courage that you think you have to put on as a disguise and a mask for everybody, then maybe you'll notice that there's going to be something else in between, right? So you come to the courage part. You've got your like, heart full of courage, your lion-hearted courage that you're going to go back out in the world and do something with. And here it comes, like fill in the blanks any way you want here, but maybe you're going to step through curiosity, enthusiasm, hopefulness, spontaneity, mindfulness, motivation, responsibility, confidence, creativity, playfulness, gratitude, appreciation, boredom, because eventually you're going to get bored with what you're doing, disappointment, overwhelm, and here you are, right back at anxiety again. However fast you get here is how you get here. And then you start it again, and it comes with all of this cycle, right? So since we are saying that it is not a straight line, what is it, right? What is it for you? I'm creating it as a spiral. I have this thing about spirals since writing Fierce Awakenings and going on this spiral path of courage and confidence. This is the book that I uh, worked on collaboratively with 11 other women and spirals have taken on a great meaning for me now. So I see all of my life through this idea that you're always moving inwards and outwards and then back upwards and leveling up or sometimes falling down and having to spiral up or down. But it's something that's always in play. So I'm gonna do something now. This is where you're gonna need your pen and paper. We're gonna start with a little, I'm gonna just gonna take you through it just so that you know what's coming. We're gonna do a little bit of a shake first. I'm gonna shake out whatever's been here right now and whatever's kind of come up. 
then you're going to get a series of three photos. They're going to, I don't want to tell you what that parts are, but we are going to work specifically with three kind of things going on in this spiral. Okay. And then you're just going to kind of write about what you see and feel. And then we're going to, you know, we're going to shake in between and then you're going to have an exercise at the end. All right. <laughs> All right. I, I don't think I could, I think I have to stop my share to share sound, right? I can't share sound while I'm sharing, right? Yeah. I'm sharing sound for my, let me just, let me just start again. <laughs> any questions before we start or anything that needs any clarity or a little bit of conversation before we go in? No. Great. You guys are awesome. Right, share sound. It's amazing when you have all these, <laughs> you have all these windows open and you don't even know where one, one, okay, where they are. All right, everybody, we're just going to shake for a second, 30 seconds, all right? Just give yourself a good shake. Just taking off like whatever's been here up until now, putting a wiggle in it, just like letting your head shake a little whole body. Wow, let it really go. Come on, let's just get out of you. 10 seconds. All right. Now, let me get over. Whoa, whoa that went way too fast. Okay, let's get to here. Just want you to take a look at this photo. Just take it all in and notice what you're feeling now. There's gonna be some music that comes in. And as the music comes in, I want you to just start writing what you feel when you see this photo. a minute and 20 seconds. seconds. Just noticing where you're at. We're noticing what comes up. What story is around this photo? How are you feeling? Alright, you guys have the photo. I'm gonna let the music run for a moment. And then we shake. Shake that off, whatever that was. It doesn't need to be here anymore. We're just resetting our nervous system. We've seen dogs do this. We have been trained in wellness programs enough to know that this is a good all body reset. more seconds, whatever you got, put a wiggle in it, and then sit down and look at this photo, really similar photo, but different. Thumbs up here. Just 
noticing how the mood is changing. Probably even the same time of year. Similar photo, different light. our emotional literacy muscles. If you want to say something like sad, find a synonym. If you want to say soothing, find a synonym. going through whatever you're doing. Here comes the drums. One more. Well, not the last shake, but give yourself a good one. Or do whatever feels good right now. Wipe it off. Whatever's there. Another way to do it is to just swipe it off you with energetic photo again similar walk through the woods what do you see now what do you feel now where are you feeling it different maybe earlier you felt it more as a full-on something coming towards you into a heart of courage. What do you choose? How much about the way we feel, we feel it, the bodies feel it, but our minds choose it. take us back out for a moment. We're going to shake this off too. Even though this is a lighter feeling and we may not want to shake it off. So if you choose, if shaking is not the right energy, you could just go ahead and hug yourself and massage yourself too. It's still going to be the same drum beat. So you choose how you want to hold whatever that was. But that Adrienne is doing both, hugging and shaking. <laughs> Feels good too. All right, couple more seconds. Just, you've been here before. It's the same feeling. A little different. All right. Now you're gonna have about a minute and a half. Create your own. Fear. 
first show up for you. Give yourself on a pretty fast walk around. If we need another minute and a half, I'll lead you to the song. Get yourself into the heart of courage. Quickly, slowly, feel yourself getting there. When you get there, I'm gonna play the song again. So right now, focus on the way in the heart. Of the There's not a straight line. What's your stepping stones? Don't worry about getting it all down. The mushy, mushy pile of <laughs> the key among. little drum roll for a moment. You got yourself into the heart of courage. You have the same awakening song out of courage. Up act with courage. And when you're acting with courage, you show up what emotions and sensations are kind of walk ourselves into it. practice of courage. What if we could make courage something like mindfulness that we just pay attention to? In a couple more seconds. you a couple minutes of quiet time to kind of wrap up whatever you're feeling, making any notes, or just holding it in your heart. Seeing how you can make choices from a heart-centered place of courage and not a mindful fear thought. What am I trying to say there? Not a mindful of thoughts that keep you anxious and nervous and fearful. Taking a moment too to notice in your own life if you see any patterns. There are some emotions that we probably default to when we get these fear impulses where it's easier for us to choose something else. Give you another minute. And this is kind of first thought, best thought. There's no judgment and shame in anything that you come to this page with. This is for you. And if you're overthinking it, close your eyes for a moment and just feel it and notice where you're feeling anything that's coming up. And being okay with it. 
Give yourself 10 more seconds. When you feel complete. You can choose what you want to do with this. Do you want to shake it out? Do you want to hold it? Do you want to just be quiet for a moment? I'm not going to play any music with this one. Just choose how you want that energy that you're now carrying to move through your body. It takes about a minute to go from your the blood that pumps out of your heart to circulate all around your body. So give yourself a minute to let that circulate and to just notice what you just experienced in a short amount of time. See where the energy goes. Imagine it moving all the way down to the tip of your toes. All the way out to the tip of your fingers. Up your back body, up your front body, to the top of your head. Moving in all directions at the same time. This is how we begin to rewire our feelings around fear. This is how we make a practice of courage. And as that blood and energy is running around in all directions and coming back into your heart to purify again, create an intention for yourself. How are you going to allow your mind to speak through your heart so that you can experience all the flavors of courage that you're meant to experience? so that you can walk back out into the world being a true, courageous, peaceful warrior of light. And just noticing how it feels to be in that, that moment, this moment of being able to make a choice from a heart of courage. We have choice points every step of the way. Now put that back in your body as well. Maybe that's with your hands on your heart. Maybe it's even hands on your head. <laughs> to calm any racing thoughts, a little bit of a massage, just putting your hands wherever they feel good right now so that your body can receive this gift that you're giving it. Don't forget your back body either. By the way, we spend a lot of time placing our hands on the front of our heart, but what about if you placed a hand on the back of your heart too, to seal that in? or on the sides. Placing your hands on your throat so that we can remove any of the sadness that might be stuck there and say the words that we need to say with truth and courage. Kind of wiping it out of our foreheads and or holding it on our third eye so that we can envision a life with courage. We're not getting rid of fear. It's kind of like mindfulness. You don't get rid of your thoughts that your brain will think. <laughs> we will have anxiety. We will have fear. But what's one thing you could do at any given moment when fear rises up to help you walk with confidence into the heart of courage? And wherever you are in this process of feeling it, living it, seeing it, sensing it, just 
Go ahead and with your arms really wide open, just hold them and give yourself a huge, tender and compassionate hug filled with self-love, strength, sensitivity. Whatever other words you feel like you need to soothe yourself with too. And then with a smile on your face, come back and let's talk. How did I feel for you? That felt wonderful, Jen. Thank you so <laughs> much. You're welcome. You're welcome. What came up for you, Adrienne, with the photos and the music? And So it was really interesting, that first photo. Uh, what came up for me was that I, I was on, like, I was on my path, you know, and I'm like, I'm committed to this path, even though these woods are kind of dark and scary and I'm like, I'm doing the thing, but I, but I was forgetting that I was not alone and that underneath my feet, there was mycelium and around me, there were trees and all of this, all of the earth and everything was supporting me in this journey and on this path. And I had this feeling that I was alone, but I knew that this was false, that I wasn't really alone. So that led me into the sort of warmth of the second picture and recognizing that support and just feeling more and more supported and like, like I am the path. I'm not just on the path, but I am the path and I'm creating the path by moving toward that, that light, that hope, you know, in the, in the foreground. And then the spring uh, picture really felt like I was just overflowing. Like there was so much within me that was starting to just like bubble out and overflow. And I was just letting all this energy spill out everywhere around me. So that's what came up for me. Excellent. <laughs> yeah, I, love yeah. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, thank you. What a great journey that was, huh? What a curious journey. Anybody else? With um, yeah. Well, the first picture, I was kind of surprised. I, I thought of spy movies. Like, I'm all alone. I'm ready to kick ass and have the big bass battle, a big ba big boss battle. Um, but there was very much a feeling of aloneness. Like, I have to do this. I have to fight. Which really surprised the heck out of me. The next one, the sunrise with the birds, I had a feeling of safety and anticipating good things, like a nourishing moment. Because the sunrise is always a new beginning. And then the third one, it was very similar, very nourishing, but it felt like end of the day energy, looking back, soothing myself after and um, kind of like relaxing. I'm about to rest and reconnect and look at all, all that I am was and all that I accomplished, but not like things like who was I being today look at who I was being but that was also surprising it wasn't based on deeds and um one thing that really surprised me about going through this spiral is how quickly the words changed it was like alone independent um proving myself but then there was strength right away it switched independence isn't necessarily something you do that is a a negative thing right so there was more like okay i got this you know i'm nourishing myself with you know sunrise practices i'm not alone i'm supported i'm never alone i'm i'm always supported so that really was like wow and the thing that i was kind of struck with is like i'm supported so i can try things and just keep revising it didn't seem like a big thing that was this horrible thing I had to like try and fail at. It was like, actually, you're going to do some things and you're just going to keep tweaking and coming back and coming back and coming back. So, wow. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. All sorts of love on you. <laughs> I love how yeah, you um, 
how the how the parts of the day showed up, right? Like it was morning and then it was sunny. Looking back at your day and how how we could carry that. That's really a a, a really good well, that was one of those practices, you know, like the morning routine and the evening routine and how you start your day and close out your day. Like why not take a look back at this and just see where that niggled at you a little bit? Yeah. Thank you, Frankie. Melissa. So yeah unmuted interesting to to hear what other people i would assume people are going to feel the same things i felt and i was like oh wow not at all <laughs> well the first one was super similar to frankie's like i felt like well i'm alone but i'm doing this thing i i'm i'm, I'm ready to fail i'm just i'm going i'm doing it i'm alone but i'm doing it i didn't think about what adrian said about uh like oh but i'm not alone i'm supportive i didn't like didn't even think of that um I had a real visceral reaction to the second picture that was not positive. Like it, it was like, oh, oh, I'm gone. It's oh, it's it. Oops, it's gone. Oh well, like it's it was loss. It was like sadness and loss. I got like visceral. <laughs> it was the music. It, it was part of the music probably, but uh, definitely uh, that was that was a melancholy picture. <laughs> And then the third picture was all hope. I'm like, okay, we're 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 starting again. We're back on. We're well, it'll be all right. So. Yeah, that was that was my journey. Felt like I was reading a novel or something because I was like, oh, it was like the 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 goal, and then like the dark night of the soul, and then you come back and the, as as with a new renewed kind of renewal. I uh, am loving on you on that because. <laughs> I had a similar uh, feeling with those first two photos when I first found them and worked with them. First one, I kept thinking of that guy up ahead going into the fog. And I thought, do I need to catch him? Or is he like, should I stay behind him and watch where he goes, right? I kept like, want, I'm like, but he's going into the fog and this is kind of creepy fog. And <laughs> I didn't have a good feeling about that photo at all. It was kind of, but then, Adriana, as you were saying it, and this time around, because I knew it was coming, right? Like, I kind of like, maybe there's just a peacefulness in being in this forest with this all around me. And that's, you know, then I kind of had this picture uh, this time around. I had a picture of maybe that's my grandfather waiting for me. You know, maybe that's, maybe there's some old, I, it comes to me as an older man. So maybe there's somebody like some spirit guide that's waiting for me just to kind of be there. And I, I lived in San Francisco for a while. Like you're used to foggy mornings. There's mystery in the fog, right? So I've had different experiences each time I've looked at this photo. And the second one, I did not, yeah, I saw it more with grief and sadness too the first time I saw it. It was probably coming out of the wondering what I'm doing in this foggy forest all alone <laughs> and having more of um same forest but the guy is not there anymore so am I supposed to go forward or am I not and why can't I see the end of the path right it was kind of this feeling of, of uncertainty the first time I saw it but but Frankie, when you said something about the light and the sunrise practice and like coming into the day and I thought, yeah, right, same forest, nice light. I could see myself doing yoga in that forest or doing a little morning ritual. Like, yeah, why not? But yeah, then the third one is of course renewal and just sort of like, yeah, I, I got this, you know, spring's in bloom, summer's here. Like we are being fruitful, I'm being productive. And this was a clearer path, right? There's no fog. It's kind of like you got the, you got the, literally the green light with all the green trees. Like you got the green light to go. So just, and you don't even have to, my feeling on that first, uh, the first one I said was, you don't even have to be in a rush to get there. You could just meander through this. Whereas in the first photo, I felt like, should I rush to get out of this moment? Whereas in the third one, I was very um, paced. That, that was kind of the word that came this time to you. So, Jen, I, I love that. It's so interesting how you saw the man as like someone in front of you. And we all just sort of like assumed like that's me in this picture, right? It's very, it's so fascinating how our, we all work so differently, right? We all assume like we all had a really similar experience, but like, no. And this is a great 
great exercise when we feel stuck and we need a little inspiration. Remember before we started this, I pulled the inspiration card when Jen and I were setting up. Uh, this and is I a pulled, great- I pulled the, you are epic card. You are epic. <laughs> exactly. so. This is a great exercise to keep in our arsenal for when you want a little inspiration and you can just look at an image and just see what comes. What does that bring? What, you know, like just start typing or writing and see what flows out when you're looking at a kind of ambiguous image. Great, great exercise. Thank you. I will give a little hat tip to two um, other women, creative souls who've, who've helped inspire some of this. It's Kim Purcell and Jody Targan. And Jody and I co-taught some of this with this, like, wow, this, and we've even used the same photo with different music and even the music switch switches. Or if you zoom in on just, if you take the big picture and then zoom in on a smaller piece of it, it's amazing what you see and don't see each time you look at it, right? So, but that's it, that, that's what we're, you know, if we're learning how to rewire ourselves, these are super simple pro, you know, practices that it's really all about changing your perspective. That's really, in another version of this, that's what that exercise is called, just choosing your perspective and knowing that you can choose it, right? <laughs> like, it's not some nebulous thing that's out there. <laughs> You, you actually can say, I am feeling really anxious right now. What is like the two minute thing that I could do to just clear my mind about that? And that might be picking up a paintbrush or doodling or going for a little walk or having a mindful moment with a beautiful cup of tea. <laughs> right? Like it could be one of any, you know, practices, but it, it's easy to remember it now right? But just even like this week, I'm feeling so heavy, like I've got to do this book edit. And I'm like, oh my God, now I'm so insecure. <laughs> like, this is not the heart of courage that I should be showing people. I'm like, in the mud crying again about that same stupid chapter. <laughs> well, because of the experience that happened there. So I'm like, oh my God, how am I still holding all of this, right? All my life, I'm still holding this. But yeah, we are just remembering to remember, you know, like pull back those pieces of us that we keep giving away as if they don't cost us anything. It costs us something to hold on to anxiety. It costs us our health. It costs us our sanity. <laughs> you know, it, 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 it costs our people that we love something too when we show up from that place, right? So let's let's not do that anymore. <laughs> and not flick the switch on it but imagine if it could be that simple right imagine if we could get through the entire spiral and then come back and say wow I really appreciated the fact that I was anxious <laughs> because that led me to the conversation I had with myself about being willing to try something right like and I think most of us live on the edges of you know what is a real you know we, maybe many of us don't even experience real life-threatening fear right maybe we we maybe we do and for those of us that have or or in whatever way that's come then we have a different experience with it but most of the time most of our days we're kind of living between our insecurity and our choice to do something about it <laughs> so just kind of noticing what keeps showing up in that space I don't know, I feel like it will just break us open and in a new direction and we can change the conversation that you have to man up and put your big girl panties on and run out into the world with your big shield and sword. And like, and don't get me wrong, I am in love with Wonder Woman. I have been in love with Wonder Woman as my superhero since I was five. I had little, you know, Wonder Wonder Woman underroos, if any of you remember that. Like she, you know, she was my my goddess when I was five and six and 10 and 12 and 20 and 30 and 40. But you know what? I can be Wonder Woman in the way that I want to be Wonder Woman. And it doesn't need the big invisible rope and the invisible plane and the golden lasso and the, it doesn't need any of that. It just needs me to show up and do what I'm supposed to do in life. So that's it. <laughs> I'll stop. 
Beautiful. Thank you so much, Jen. And I just wanted to say, you know, you were saying like, oh, how am I, you know, showing up right now? Like, you're still showing up, Jen. You're still showing up. And that takes courage too to show up in that in that space of anxiety, in that space of overwhelm, but to still show up and sit with it and do the work. And that's where we really set the example. It's not the times when it's easy and fun. <laughs> it's not the times when we're in joy and gratitude and it all just flows. Like the times that we really set the example of courage is when we're scared shitless. And we show up anyway in our fear, in our insecurity, in our shame and our shit and just say, I, I, this feels awful, but I'm, I'm still going to do it. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for that. You know, those reminders too, right? They're all in my, and it's just so funny because I, um, for the last couple of days, uh, I'll, I'll mention this. I, I keep pulling, uh, the queen of air while well, the queen of swords and it's it's just come up a few times already and she's just you know in one version of the deck she's up on the mountaintop just kind of looking out on her landscape of assessing what's there but the one that the deck that i i used recently or i'm using recently is the good tarot deck from colette baron reed and she's very like different she's got an owl and she's very like i'm just being present <laughs> To the ideas that come like it's a it's a completely different queen right and i'm really loving that too right these archetypes that we play with in our own mind of who we have to be at certain moments like it might even change from moment to moment but it will certainly change over the course of our lifetimes right if i'm going from wonder woman of the comic you know of the um linda carter days <laughs> You know, not not even the new one, but the Linda Carter days to, oh, there's this kind of queen archetype that's just kind of hanging out here with her owl being all knowing. <laughs> so, you know, just to, to play in that space that something else could be possible. Beautiful. Thank you so much for joining us today. Does anyone have any questions for Jen before we wrap? So if we find ourselves like anxious, you recommend looking at a picture and writing what comes up? Try it. I'm kind of trying everything, right? I mean, I'm, yeah. you know, some people would say, oh, the way I deal with anxiousness is I like go jump out of airplanes and parachute my way down. Like, I don't do things like that. <laughs> it's out of my <laughs> sort of scope of, I don't think I need to throw myself out of an airplane, right? But when you, because there's something in that analogy though, right? Because when we're in anxiety, we just want to get away from it. But what if, mm -hmm. what if it also just became the mindfulness practice of, wow, my, my head is really spinning a story right now. You know what? Let me just take that little yarn that's every night waking me wake up. The other day, this happened because I had like some panic moment. I'm having like panic moments at five o'clock in the morning, messages coming through like that I can't handle. And it's like, you gotta do this, Jen. Don't forget that post. Don't forget this to put this in your email. Don't like, it was like nagging things. And I said, oh, thank you so much for reminding me. But the working hours for my mind are between the hours of nine and nine. So it is five o'clock in the morning. There's not, I'm not getting out of bed to go do that thing. <laughs> Right. So it was just even the mo like noticing that somehow I was waking up with all this stuff and just saying, look, can we just schedule the breakdown between like 9 a.m. and 9 p.m.? <laughs> and I got to say, it's for the last few days, it's worked. <laughs> it's kind of worked. But it depends on like how you're feeling the anxiousness, right? Because sometimes the anxiousness can can weave itself into some sort of state of panic where you don't even realize like there's a way out of it right so you mm -hmm. kind of have to deconstruct it a little bit and and hold the the hold the thread of it and I had this image I was in a conversation the other day with a few other uh women who are doing soulful creations and leading people and facilitating circles and she had a, an experience with 
being too attached to something. And somebody suggested cutting the cord, right? And I had this whole image of, imagine that it's a boat and you're just unmooring it from your dock. You know, not necessarily, you're not necessarily sending it out into an ocean to go away. Like maybe it's a small lake and you're just sending it a little bit away from you, right? And just visualizing that you can put your anxiety and worry on a boat for a little while and lengthen the cord that's attached to you, you know, your dock, right? Your mind, your docking, you know, docking slip. So yeah, but I don't know. I have found it helpful to combine something that looks and feels visual with something that feels like audio and then something that's kinetic. And for me, my biggest anxiety killing things are to just pull out a paintbrush and throw water paint on a piece of on a piece of paper you know or take out my crayons and color and shades of rainbow you know <laughs> like it, it mm -hmm. getting my hands busy gets my mind out of the thought cycle mm -hmm. but you know test it it's all an experiment all of it and what works today doesn't work tomorrow and may not yeah. work next week so just stay you know my 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 counsel and my guidance is always just do what feels good in that moment. And then mm -hmm. one of the things that I've always learned and I carry for a long, long time now, I, I trained for a marathon, well, several marathons, but the first marathon I did, I did it with a uh, team in training and they used to, I think they're still around, but they raised money for the Leukemia Lymphoma Society. And we met a young girl who had lymphoma at the time. She was a teenager. And she told a story of how the doctor would come in and give her chemo. And he would say, could you do this for two minutes? And she said, yes. And he would come back in two minutes and would say, could you do this for two more minutes? And she said, I could do anything for two minutes. And that got me all the way through marathon training. It got me through a three and a half year walk. It, got, it gets me through life almost every day. <laughs> I could do this thing for two minutes. And I could be really focused, or I can really concentrate, and I can do it for two minutes, and then I can check back in in two minute intervals if I have to, all the way through. It's like that, you could drive at night and not see anything in front of you except five feet in front of you, and you could drive all night long that way, mm -hmm. right? So, do what works. Thank you. Experiment. Thank you, Frankie. Thanks. Thank you. Beautiful. We are at time, so we do need to wrap up. If we have further questions for Jen, she is in the community now. You can ask her there. You can reach out to her. Jen, please tell us how we can get in touch with you. And I know you have an offer for the group, so. Oh, well, I have a, yeah, thanks. I'm just going to share again. Uh, best way to get in touch with me is uh, Jen, J-E-N-N, -N, at alwaysonmyway.com. That's where you'll find me. I am actually running uh, a new workshop on uh, on April 19th, which is intuitive movement, emotional release, and mindful writing. It will be different than this, and we're going to spend, there'll be two hours, but we're going, going to go through a handful of emotions, move with that emotion, and then write from that emotion. So it's a it's it's a combination of of of, of an emotional tour movement practice that I'm licensed to train, and then the way that I sort of approach writing. So that's there, and that is um actually on sale till today for seventy seven dollars. It goes up to ninety seven tomorrow. I'll make sure that I'll put that link in the community so that you have it. Um, and I'm on Instagram, Jen Balco. Just the way you see it here, without the caps um, all together, one word, J E N N. B A L J K O on Instagram. Uh, and I'm in the Facebook group, uh, The Fierce Awakened Woman. So that's where you can find me. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, Adrian. <laughs> Thank you all for joining me.